Okay, so this is some of the software that I use for my servers and VMware and all this good stuff. So we'll just kind of run over a little bit of it. And if there's any questions on some of this stuff, I can go into more detail. Or I'm sure there's other videos out there that you can find that show it. But um, I guess the uh, heart of most of this, or you know, one thing that can definitely save your uh, tail in, in a emergency situation is a backup and you know there's others out there like Mosey and I'm sure there's even others beyond that but Mosey was a big one back in the day uh, but it's only supported under Windows so I actually went with this company called Crash Plan and I've been with them for three or four years now and I love it it works good um, I've got a couple different backup sets or pools I can't remember what they call these but I have my high priority which is basically everything except for VMware images and then some backups that I manually have so you can see these this will always back up first unless there's another one running and it should kick back off here I paused it so that the other could sync back up and then you've got your inbound so I think I was saying earlier or in a previous video I actually back up my laptop and my PC or my desktop that I'm actually on here to this server and or my file server and then it actually backs up all of the data to the crash pan crash plan cloud or crash plan central whatever it is they call it so uh, this is this is what I talked about as well this is just CentOS uh, I'm VNC'd in the only reason I really have the GUI is for this this is the only thing that I use and you can run it headless but uh, it just seemed like it was gonna be a little bit too much of a hassle so it's not that big a deal I'm uh, this is all it does is basically file storage and and backups and stuff for me so I'm not looking for super high performance so um, going to the command line we will see my raid configuration here if it'll show yeah it looks good so you can see this is still part of the original uh, build it's syncing up all the data uh, for parity and all that good stuff across the disks and that's why the lights were going you know solid the other day just constant um, doesn't have too much longer only a few more hours but um, it's just I'm doing a software raid with MD admin this uh, I wanted to do this just in case my raid card ever blew up or you know the system died um, and actually in this case what happened was I bought six new drives off the internet and then I had two uh, existing ones and what I did was I took those out of the system reloaded the OS which I kinda talked about previously uh, on my file server get the light so and then what I did was there was my original OS drive the black one that was my one of my raid one discs with all my data on it so what I did was I, I put the I put one of the raid one discs in the in the new system with the new OS on it and uh, mounted it up got all the data to where I could read it and then that's what this backup is running right now once it's all backed up I'm gonna sync it over to my raid array which should be uh, done with its initial sync you know in just a few hours so by tomorrow I should be able to sync some data over to it and then I'll switch all the mounts and everything and then I'll add these old disks or my original two disk two terabyte drives into the RAID 6 and we'll get it up to a 12 terabyte RAID instead of whatever it's at now which is a little less than 8 I believe so so that's where we're at on that um, also the main reason I built out this was for uh, blu-ray ripping I was doing DVDs and it was working really good and uh, so I decided to venture into the Blu-ray collection as well and just that way I could stream it to all my PlayStations and you know I got uh, I got some little kids and they love to open them up and play with them and it seems like about 10% of my DVDs or their DVDs that all the kids DVDs were broken or scratched beyond readable so I didn't want that to happen with the Blu-rays and all that stuff especially when you drop 20 30 bucks for those stupid things so I'll have a backup here just in case and I'm using um, I just actually purchased this tonight it's uh, I don't even know how you say that but there's the name it works great uh, for streaming to the PlayStation uh, I'm also just kinda showing uh, my data back and forth so we're looking at about 20 megabits is what it's streaming at right now it's not too much um, so from the server itself and this is all being synced over to server I just showed you the file server uh, let's see if we can find 
So what I what I'm running over here for my DLNA player or UPnP is uh, mini DLNA, and I've tried several of these things. I've tried MediaTomb, and I used that in the past, and it worked great, but it wouldn't pick up the new. Or I couldn't get it to transcode the files to the right uh, format so that the PlayStation could read it. So um, I ended up playing around with this one, and it worked great. Uh, I've tested it, and everything is good to go. So. Um, so basically, here's here's it running. I did, uh, uh, it, it doesn't have, all it has is an executable, and they give you a config file to play with, so that's what I used. There's not like a init script or anything, which I'll probably end up building, but uh, that's it running in the process list right now, and it's, it's working, so. And then what I just did for now, just a few minutes ago, was I added it to my rc.local so this will be executed on startup that way if it does reboot or something while I'm not here it'll crank it back up and wife and kiddos can watch uh, movies and I don't have to come in and take a look at it so and start it back up and uh, that's just the process list there so anyways uh, that works out pretty good um, and let's see I think that's pretty much it so and then here's my uh, VMware and I've got one host. I had two in there, but uh, like I said, the old one was Dell, and it was a uh, Intel processor. And this one that I built, well, actually, I didn't really even show much of it. But let's we'll see if we can look at the stats on it. It's a uh, it's an AMD 8128 core processor, and man, I'll tell you, this thing rocks. I haven't even gotten close to utilizing the whole thing, even when I was installing multiple operating systems and. Um, you know, cranking away at updates and copying around and stuff, so it's doing pretty good. And uh, 32 gigs of RAM. This, all that is just like my file server is all new egg special stuff. So I get their uh, daily deals and uh, shell shockers and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, it runs good. And then I'm using the same motherboard that I was in the other or this file server over here, and that's pretty much it. I got a few VMs running right there. None of this is accessible from the outside except for a couple of them, so I don't care if you see the names or not. But uh, yeah, and then uh, I never got these to recover. My uh, I was running the Cisco Virtual Ace, and then just a uh, vCenter 2 I I tried to run vCenter in the HA mode, and man, I just had so many problems getting that to work. So I'll leave that part of it to the experts, and maybe one day I'll get it to work. I, I actually even had just problems integrating it with Active Directory. It, seemed like every time I would reboot, uh, the server just totally would get screwed up and I'd have to end up reinstalling everything from all the services again, which isn't the end of the world, but you know I don't want to do that every time it reboots because I was moving stuff around a lot. But anyways, yeah, so I took the, well, when I rebuilt the server uh, that's on the floor in here for now, uh, obviously all my storage went away and these two I wasn't worried about because I don't use them for anything, just playing around. Um, but they never recovered, even though the, the disk is still there, you can see it. Uh, let's see. So you can see there's my ASA. Well, that's, so that's on that data store. And then on my, this is my SSD data store, you can see there's vCenter L2. So they're there, and if I go in and, if I were to remove the old one and then add this one, back, add it back, it works fine. I can start them back up and everything, but... I don't know, maybe it's just the way that I took it down, and since I rebuilt the system, it just got confused. But, um, anyways, that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, one thing I did, so I think I mentioned I got the High Point Rocket Raid card, and it works great. Um, I did have a, a fake raid set up with those three drives, and I'll probably do a fake, well, no, I'll, do, I'll keep software raid just for fun. But um, I had a fake RAID set up on those, and it built, and I was able to see it in format and all that stuff. But I did have to have the drivers for this uh, for Linux before it would recognize any of the drives. And I had to compile it from source. I could not get their auto-install scripts or whatever to work. So, and not that big deal. All you do is just download the source file, and then I, I don't even remember if I had to, you know, configure and then make, make install. I don't remember the exact process, but I think it was in the... Uh, uh, listed in their install document or readme or something but um, cool so yep that's pretty much what I got um, 
again if you have any questions I think I've said this about every time and I'm probably just gonna put this all in one video but uh, yeah if you have any questions on the setup or want to see anything else um, definitely let me know and I'll keep filming otherwise this was more or less started out just as a review of the of the case I know there's another guy or a couple other people that have kind of showed this case but I'll tell you for the 300 and something bucks or whatever it was 299 it was well worth it um, you know if you're looking for high end you know you should go with a super micro or or Dell or HP whoever your choice is you know but this I mean for a home server or a small office I mean this is perfect or even even for an enterprise that does the you know in-house type stuff this would be perfect so lots of storage you just gotta gotta have the cards for them that's the other thing I need to do is I didn't I didn't realize that my motherboard didn't have a video card so I had to stick my big old old uh, it's a GTX 8800 <laughs> uh, card in here and so that took up my other PCI Express slot so I have to pull that out and put a PCI one in and so I can put another uh, RAID card in there because I'm already itching to get this thing populated. So, Alright, cool guys. Well, uh, we'll talk to you next time. See ya.